Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with Daily FX. Today is Monday, May 8th, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And of course, the big news is Macron is now the next president of France. Emmanuel Macron has beaten Marine Le Pen to become the next president of France by a sizable margin, 66.1% to 33.9%. A landslide if you ever had one. Believe it or not, the polling error on the French election was greater than that for either the U.S. presidential election or Brexit vote last June. I'm sure that's going to be an overlooked fact, though, as the outcome that most people in the mainstream media were looking for uh, was for Macron victory. Accordingly, this is probably the best example of buy the rumor, sell the news that we've seen in several months, if not years. And I mean that because we've seen the euro trade lower on what should theoretically be a positive result for the euro. Marine Le Pen was a candidate who was running on pulling France out of the EU. And so uh, now that she is no longer going to be president, it seems that this existential threat to the euro has more or less faded. But um, it's not really a surprise to see the euro trade a little bit lower here after the uh, announcement has been made official. We're seeing a situation where after the first round of the French elections, euro dollar gapped significantly higher and FX markets, particularly in the volatility specter, uh, absolutely started to price out any threat of risk that Le Pen posed in the second round. So what we're looking here is a market that was properly priced for the event ahead of time. Uh, people coming online yesterday and saying, okay, well, this catalyst has run its course. It's time to take profits on my you know, euro long position around the French elections, which if you had established about two weeks before the first election, you'd have gotten in around somewhere near, say, 105.70, which is where the low was. And you could take profit up here after you know, three or four weeks. You're looking at a pretty sizable gain just for three or four weeks of trading up by about 4% and 4.5% or so since then. Um, ultimately, now the course, if you will, the attention will shift to two things in particular. One, whether or not Emmanuel Macron can actually get legislation passed, which means we'll be paying attention to the June 11th to June 18th French parliamentary elections. And second, what's going on with the UK snap elections, which are being held on June 8th. Overall, we're talking about an outcome here for the euro that probably does well um, by all the European currencies. An introduction of new political risks to the eurozone would have been unwelcomed. And so the pound today, not really seeing much downside, if you will, 129.62, um, has to give hope, at least from my point of view, that if the polls are correct, then Theresa May's negotiating hand going into the Brexit negotiation with the EU will be strengthened after the June Eighth elections. Overall, right now, she only has a 17-seat majority in UK Parliament, and if she can bolster that majority, she'll have a cushion to move against some of the uh, Brexiteer hardliners in her own party, which should allow for a softer Brexit, if you will. Although, certainly, we've seen some headlines in recent days that would suggest that perhaps Theresa May isn't as much of a soft Brexiteer as once previously thought. Um, overall, with the euro being the far and away largest component of the dollar index at 57.6%, we're seeing that the euro's slight contraction today is leading to a U.S. dollar strength. Dollar index, however, still trading on the underside of the trend line from the May, June, and August 2016 lows. We had that unemployment report on Friday, the non from payrolls report, which was good on the headline, but really mixed on the internals. Wage growth was slower than anticipated, and the participation rate fell, suggesting that the drop in the uh, unemployment rate isn't necessarily a natural occurrence, not organic, right? Um, generally speaking, I think this is the kind of labor market report when all is said and done, the Fed's going to look at it and say, yeah, this is kind of exactly what we're looking for. Not too hot, not too cold, um, but will allow us to continue along our prescribed path of raising rates as we've previously laid out in the March and then previous before that, the December meeting, which would be a rate hike in June, a rate hike in September, and then an announcement to wind down their balance sheet reinvestment program come December. Uh, like so many other central banks, the Fed is beholden to these meetings where Janet Yellen has a press conference or they have the new staff 
or in the case of the Fed, the summary of economic projections, SEPs. And so the window for the Fed to move really op only opens up three more times this year, June, September, and December. It's a effort to become transparent. Central banks, uh, if it's the BOE, the ECB, the RBNZ, the Fed, they've all kind of become predictable in this sense. Um, as the dollar index continues to rally, it's kind of worth noting that we're seeing dollar yen uh, uh, pull back a little bit here today. Gapped open higher at the market uh, open yesterday in New York. Ultimately, yen coming off as geopolitical tensions uh, with respect to, say, France were removed off the table. Gold has also taken a turn lower uh, today at the start of the market. Uh, and weak open as well. Um, but I would keep an eye on dollar yen more than anything else now going forward because now that the uh, political drivers are seemingly dissipating out of Europe, attention is going to return back to what really is the underpinning of dollar yen interest rate differentials. And so um, if we're faced with a situation where uh, we're looking at dollar yen struggling to gain much further uh, because of something like, say, the U.S. 10 year yield is failing to gain much further ground, dollar yen could correct lower to realign itself with how U.S. yields have been moving as the political risk premium has dissipated out of the market. Um, ultimately, have to think that equities will play a part as well. U.S. equities, of course, had a nice open to the start of the week, gapping higher on the news of the French election result, although they are trading back lower here, back just a hair under 2,400, although we were at fresh all-time highs overnight. One of the two commodity currencies we're keeping an eye on in recent days would be Aussie dollar. Um, Aussie dollar versus the U.S. dollar. Looks like it's working its way through this double top pattern here. Still seeing that iron ore and copper pressure, uh, prices, generally speaking, base metal prices, remain under pressure. This is something that could continue to harm the Australian dollar in the near term. Momentum is firmly negative in the pair with price sitting below all three, 821.34 daily EMA, stochastics, and MACD both pointing lower in bearish territory. Um, the other commodity currency they were keeping an eye on is dollar CAD, which had a, a pretty significant reversal there on Friday, that bearish key reversal, if you will, up at the highs. So this is something that should definitely be uh, uh, you know, kept an eye on right now. I would think, though, that oil is going to play a significant role in determining whether or not we actually can see a rebound in the Canadian dollar at this point in time. We are working with that nice hammer that we formed on Friday. However, we're still trading below this trend line that's been guiding price since the April, August, and then again November 2016 lows. So as far as I'm concerned, yes, we may have a nice little candlestick situation working here in both dollar CAD and oil. However, until we can make some significant headway back through former, in this case, resistance levels, or in the, in the case of, uh, we're talking about dollar CAD, support levels, ultimately it may just mean it put a pause on the current downtrend um, in oil or the current uptrend in dollar CAD and wait for more evidence to gather before the next decision is made. Although again, it's worth noting here, just like in dollar CAD where momentum is firmly to the upside, price below 8.2134, I mean, seeing MACD and stochastics continuing to trend lower. Um, when we turn to the economic calendar for today, it is admittedly a little bit of a quieter economic calendar, particularly for the North American trading session. Not much data of significance due out. Canadian housing starts really the only thing that catches my attention. Instead, we're going to be paying attention uh, to these Fed speeches later on this morning. Fed's Bullard is speaking at 835 Eastern, 1235 GMT, and Fed's Loretta Mester is speaking at uh, 1245 GMT, that's 845 Eastern. We should start to see Fed speeches pick up now in the next few days as we've gotten through the blackout period ahead of that uh, May uh, FOMC meeting. And so uh, we'll see how policy officials feel about the state of U.S. economic data and how the U.S. Uh, labor market report fits in with their plan to raise rates at least twice more this year. I'm partial to think that the commentary that we're going to see out of these Fed officials over the coming days will be everything's moving according to plan. Uh, gradual pace of interest rate hikes should be expected. And in turn, um, this very well may start to help drag forward end of year interest rate expectations, which up until this point of time have been admittedly depressed. Only one rate hike priced in for 2017 the rest of this year, according to Fed Funds futures markets, barely above 50% for December. So there is still a little bit of uh, a potential fuel in the tank for the greenback, although we got to see some headway made here after breaking down through um, two significant support levels just last week. All right, that's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, this 
morning. It's Monday. I'll be covering the FX week ahead, a strategy for major event risk webinar. You can access that by getting on over to the front page of the website right now, clicking on that green box and pulling up you up to this registration form for the event. Otherwise, you can always visit the webinar calendar and likewise uh, head over to the registration page from there. Starts at 7.30 Eastern, 11.30 GMT. If I don't speak to you before then, good luck trading. Uh, you can always get in touch with me via the Daily FX Real Time Newsfeed, Stock Twitter, and Twitter at CVecchioFX. You can access that by heading on over to the top ribbon of the website, going on the news and real time news, see news analysis, charts, trade ideas, etc., all on the feed from our analysts and our team. Likewise, you can email me, CVecchio, at dailyfx.com. Good luck trading and talk to you soon.